Hello guys, today I am going to share with you a very small poem. I know why the cage bird sings by Maya Angelou. Actually, Maya Angelou is a writer, but sometimes she writes poems also. She used to write poem actually. She was, uh, you can say, from Afro American tribe. So her one of her parent used to be an American, and one of her parent was African. So at that time there was a high racism between blacks and whites. So basically, the whites used to dominate the black people. So if a black people is very supreme rich, then also he used to be a slave of a white person. So Maya Angelou was kind very small from very small age. From very small age, she observed so many people like this. So when after Abraham Lincoln fought for the supremacy or for the fire, you can say for the freedom of uh, black people, then uh, Maya Angelou wrote some poems about racism and all. So one of her poem that deals with uh, the racism between the black people and the white people so this is one of those poem i know why the cage bird sings you can see so i know why the cage bird sings from the poem name it suggests that there is a bird which is compared with another bird a cage bird is kind of kind of you can say a cage bird is compared with a free bird so basically i will be explaining the poem the beautiful poem it is and you can say magnificent no words for this poem so let's start off without any wasting any time so a free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky leaps means you can say jump so uh, you have ever seen a free bird or you can normally say you have seen a bird when she flies in the sky so when you see him flying like this in the sky so there is some pressure of the winds which help us uh, help her or his to uh, help him to fly actually so when it flies or he flies in the sky actually maya angelo uses the bird as he in this poem so if you are going to write something like uh, her or it then it will be proved wrong so we should use uh, use the correct term like his or he so when in this part when the free bird is trying to fly in the sky the cage uh, the fl free bird is flying so the current from behind or the you can say the currents or the pressure of the wind is helping him to fly so after that it says that floats downstream till the current ends so basically it is flying uh, he is flying so he is flying in the sky and after some time when the wind stops for a while so she sits down and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky so basically after uh, flying for certain amount of time when she sits down so she sits for a while you can uh, imagine like a bird is sitting there and just behind there is a beautiful sunset or a sunrise so basically that image is performed in this stanza so in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky means dares to claim the sky is actually an idiom or actually it is an idiom and it is it's a meaning is that dares to claim the sky meaning is proclaiming his or her or your own jurisdiction and what is jurisdiction is your uh, rights fundamental rights so the dares to claim the sky is actually uh, proclaiming or claiming your own jurisdiction so the free bird is claiming that the sky is his or you can say proclaiming his uh, rights and freedoms so basically this was stanza was for a free bird so there are two opponents or you can say antonyms so if there is a free bird then there will be a cage bird so if there is a cage bird let's see what my angelo states about cage bird so but but a bird that stack stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage his wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he's open so he opens his throat to sing but a bird that stalks down his narrow cage actually stalks down in his narrow cage you can say like uh, the bird is packed inside a wood uh, not wooden actually it is an iron cage so the bird is actually packed inside or caged inside a cage so that's why we use the term caged bird over here and caged bird over here um, represents the black people and the white uh, people are represented by the free bird so but a bird that stuck stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage actually if you are packed inside a room for more than 
your uh, capability it means that you are packed in that uh, room for all the time you are not allowed to go out so exactly you will get anger or you will get arrogant or you will have any kind of sort of anger in yourself so you can say that you can seldom see through his bars of rage his wings are clipped and now my angel also states that not only he is packed inside a cage but his wings are clipped wings are clipped means uh, her wings are cut off you you can imagine like uh, a scissor is used to cut it uh, his wings and after that when the wings are cut off and the feet are tied so basically the first part says that the his uh, wings are tied but his feet are uh, sorry wings are clipped and feet are tied so she is uh, it has only one part that is the throat or you can say tongue for which he tries to sing why does he sing we will get to know in the other part of the poem the cage bird sings with a fearful trail of things unknown but long for still so in the third stanza my angelo proves that the cage bird sings with a fearful trail means the cage bird has only one part left that is throat i have already said so when she uses her throat uh, his throat to sing so when he uses his throat to sing uh, he, he actually sings in a kind of a manner which is quite uh, shows that she is quite afraid or she is cra- uh, coward actually not courageous so kind of cowardness or uh, you can say she is quite afraid she is feeling afraid from something or the other so the cage bird sings with a fearful tone fearful means afraidness or fearful means something which gives you fear so fearful trill here means trill is a shallow deep voice a uh, shallow voice actually not deep voice shallow steep voice means you can say as a patli awaz you can say so why quite thin voice you can say so why thin voice because the its pitch is quite high the the more the sound will be shallower then more will be the high pitch so this is kind of physics so let's deal with literature first the fearful little steep shallow voice of things unknown and long for sale now my angelo uh, says here say here that things are unknown but long for sale means things are unknown basically but not for so long it means you will get to know about what is happening in the future so you are something or the other the case but doesn't know what is going to happen with her but you can uh, probably late or uh, you have a kind of probability that you uh, that uh, it gets to know that what kind of treatment she is going to be given by whoever the person is doing and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the cage bird sings of freedom okay my angelo in this stanza it is a very important stanza actually because here many things are to be proved by her and are proved by her so first of all she thinks what she thinks we are get to go, going to know that we are uh, going to know that the cage bird is sings a song of freedom and why does she sing because she knows or he knows the, um, that there is somebody standing on the distant hill a distant hill is a hill you can say a far hill uh, which is quite far from you so actually a hill which is quite far from you is a distant hill but the bird can see uh, a person standing over there or a f- fellow person standing there so she opens her throat to sing the, for the song of freedom that that person can come there and can rescue him from that ugly or evil person sings of freedom so basically if anybody asks you what kind of a song the cage bird is singing so a quite simple answer without reading also poem you can identify that always a cage bird or a cage person or a person who is restricted from or is bounded by his rights is always the, there to ask for freedom or not ask but actually sings for freedom oh wow three stanzas are over and two stanzas are left stanzas fourth stanza states that a free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own it's quite a important stanza this is uh, this stanza is divided into two parts four four lines each but as a whole we can say that it is one stanza anyways the free bird thinks of another breeze now let's get back to the free bird again that what we had discussed further uh, before actually was the free bird actually the ocean uh, sorry the air current stopped 
so pressure stopped then the free bird also came and said down rested a while now uh, uh, another breeze here states that again wind currents are started flowing so again she um, uh, tries to fly and then again flies in the sky and proclaims her jurisdiction and or here my angelo proves that dares to claim the sky so again she tries to fly in the sky and the trade winds soft through the sign trees okay the trade winds winds means that those winds coming actually trade winds over here is used as uh, the winds that are coming and helping that uh, bird to fly in the sky <clears throat> winds through the sign trees and fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn okay in the sign trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn okay in the for third stanza sorry uh, th sorry third line it states that uh, fat worms are waiting on a dark bright lawn okay now basically she is flying in the sky obviously if we fly she will get hunger or she will get hang uh, hungry actually so she is actually a bird likes fat worms uh, it means it is quite tasty for him so she uh, he uh, actually sees those worms on the trees she goes eats enjoy and all uh, enjoys just uh, from sunrise to sunset because after that uh, as we all know that after sunset uh, every bird returns to his nest so till that period of time she is flying in the sky eating dancing waving enjoying like a free bird actually it is a free bird or you can say a white person like a white person and all those cage bird that it was some or some or the other related to black people as i already started with that quote about the black people and the white people's <laughs> war but a cage bird stands on the grave of dreams his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream very important to lines because but a cage bird stands on the grave of on in this line maya angelo confirms that uh, the cage bird is standing on a grave of dreams now here many of you will have a doubt that what is grave of dreams actually just imagine you are having a dream you want to be an engineer doctor artist teacher whatsoever you want be a player or some or the other so now you are practicing or gaining education for that field now after some time you realize i will not be that particular person or particular field will not be connected by me because i will be standing some or the other over there that i if suppose the, this is the path and this is your success then half a while you have covered but half a while is left so you are actually standing at this part of time so now you know that after this i will not be able to move 1% ahead so actually your dreams are dead now you are not able or actually you are not able to do anything in your life because first of all your some or their 10 to 20 years of age you gain education practice and uh, learn actually learn uh, very importantly learn practice prove improve and many more others motivational and all so after a while after gaining education and practice for after 20 years when you know that i have uh, invested my 20 years in gaining education and practice for this field and after 20 years you got to know about the results that no i am sorry the dreams are not going to be achieved by me because actually the dreams are dead for me some or the other condition uh, example your miss happening has been taken place in your house or some or the other negative conditions so because grave of dreams here suggest the same thing so here grave of dreams for cage bird is that yeah, she is not able to fly in the sky and she is not free uh, actually she is not free to and she is bound for everything she is actually not free for anything so she knows that she is standing on the grave of dreams um actually she is standing on the grave of dreams particular line because in your examination it will certainly ask you about what is the grave of dreams here suggests uh so for the uh, as i know uh, as he, i told you that uh, cage bird is some or the other standing on the grave of dreams that he, she cannot proclaim her jurisdiction the most important uh, part of the poem that states his shadow shou shouts on a nightmare scream now imagine when you get to know that your dreams are dead you have no dream now you will not get to you will not get any kind of same means you, you will be in a pressure or something or the other so you will not get sleep you will not get to sleep 
सो आफ्टर सम टाइम वैन शी ट्राई टू स्लीप और शी डजेंट स्लीप बट शी एक्चुअली शी इज सॉरी ही एक्चुअली सी इज हिज शेडो जस्ट बिसाइड हिम और जस्ट बिहाइंड हिम अहेड हिम और द लेफ्ट और द राइट साइड सो वैन ही सीज हिज ओन शेडो he gets distracted or you can say he get afraid why he imagines it to be a devil or kind of something uh, satan in uh, english a good name for a devil you can say satan so you, he gets afraid that's why he the maya angelo over here uses the term nightmare scream he gets afraid he screams even if you see a horror movie you get uh, to see a um, uh, ghost or some or there you get afraid you shout that the same condition is applied over here his wings are clipped his feet are tied so he opens his throat to sing now these two lines we had just studied passed before over here so these two lines are actually uh, repeated by maya angelo because she uh, she wants us to actually focus on these two lines because these two lines are quite important see if your clips uh, imagine yourself as a bird and your wings are clipped and your feet are tied and obviously you have the throat to sing so your throat to sing means you are helping or uh, you want a helping hand from somebody so my angelo wants us to emphasize on these two lines now the last uh, important stanza of this poem actually the cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown for long for still same that we had uh, seen over here the cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but long for still and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the cage bird sings of freedom this same stanza is actually repeated again by my angelo it is intentionally repeated by her actually she wants uh, the readers to get attracted in this stanza because this quite a uh, stanza is very important no uh, very 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 important actually because this stanza proves the importance of uh, freedom importance of your rights and importance uh, and is somewhat imagine a person has not been given freedom he actually knows what is the value of freedom but a man who has uh, but a man who has been given freedom no yes i can eat i can walk i can do anything of my he no simple simple like uh, nothing else but a man who is not given freedom like the black people so they know what is actually the importance of what is the actually significance of freedom so over the all the other my angelo this poem states that the fight between black people and white people where black people are actually the cage birds and white people are actually the free bird so it uh, you can say a sharp attack on racism overall summary of this poem overall the poem is completed thank you for listening to me till now thank you for giving your precious time thank you